Hi students, welcome to the chapter 9 lecture, the first part of it at least, um, and we're going to be covering patterns of inheritance. So if you're interested in genetics, this lecture should be very interesting to you. Our learning outcomes for this chapter, um, we're going to be covering Gregor Mendel, uh, monohybrid crosses, alleles, dominant versus recessive genetics, phenotype versus genotype, Punnett squares, other patterns of inheritance, human disorders, sex-linked inheritance, and then we're going to do some Punnett square practice. So I hope that most of you have heard of this man. His name was Gregor Mendel. He was the first person to analyze patterns of inheritance and he is responsible for deducing the fundamental principles of genetics. Um, of course, he was discovering these things and making crosses between pea plants in his garden um, far before we even understood um, what the genetic basis of inheritance was. So little was known about the molecular basis of heritability that is to say DNA, um, and a lot of the terminology that we use today was not known at the time of his experiments. So Mendel was an Austrian monk. He studied garden peas, and these plants are easily manipulated. The plants can either self-fertilize or they can cross-fertilize. So if the plant self-fertilizes, you can take the pollen within the stamen and um, go ahead and let that plant self-fertilize um, its carpal here. Or um, you can transfer pollen from another plant and fertilize the carpal um, by hand. Traits are simply varying characteristics in organisms, such as flower color or stem length. So these um, traits here are the ones that Gregor Mendel was primarily concerned with. And the traits that he was looking at showed simple dominant or recessive characteristics. So for example, the dominant characteristic in these pea plants was purple flower color. The recessive characteristic was white flower color. Mendel experimented with plants to create both true breeding varieties and hybrids. And a true breeding variety is simply a variety of plant that will produce offspring like itself. Hybrids, on the other hand, um, are a cross between two different varieties. So here would be um, a hybrid, in which case he removed stamens from the purple flower, so he prevented that flower from self-fertilizing, and he transferred pollen from stamens of a white flower to the carpal of the purple flower. Um, this produced a pollinated carpal that matured into a pod, and then those seeds were planted from that pod, producing the F1 or filial 1 generation of offspring. Mendel performed many experiments. Um, most of what we know today about monohybrid crosses come from his experiments, and a monohybrid cross is simply a cross between parent plants that differ in just one characteristic. So there's only one obvious phenotypic or clearly expressed difference between the two parent plants. And an example would be crossing true breeding purple flowered plants with white flowered plants. Again, the only thing that differs between these two is the flower color. So here again we have the P generation. Each of these is a true breeding um, variety here. We have purple flowers crossed with white flowers. The F1 generation is composed of all purple flowers. But then what happens if you were to cross individuals from the F1 generation together? So you are essentially crossing siblings here, and the F2 generation produces three quarters of the plants with 
purple flowers and one quarter with white flowers. So Gregor Mendel wondered um, what could account for these ratios that he was seeing in his monohybrid crosses. He ran many trials with many different traits. So for example, he crossed a short pea plant with a tall pea plant. In the F1 generation, he got all tall. But in the second generation, he got three tall to one short on average. He always found these same proportions in the offspring, in the F1 and the F2 generation. From his results, Mendel generated four hypotheses. The first of which is there are alternate forms of genes. Now we call these alleles. His second hypothesis was that each organism has two alleles for each trait, one inherited from each parent. His third hypothesis was that if the two inherited alleles for a trait differ, then one is dominant and one is recessive. And his fourth hypothesis was that gametes carry only one allele for each inherited trait because the two alleles separate from each other during meiosis. And this is known as the law of segregation. Remember that gametes just refer to sex cells, which um, would be sperm or egg cells. So each sperm or egg cell just carries one allele for each inherited trait. So this is a visual representation of the law of segregation. Pairs of alleles segregate or separate during gamete formation, and the fusion of gametes at fertilization creates allele pairs again. So here we have homologous chromosomes. So they, they are uh, one from each parent here. And remember, a homologous chromosome is just a section of DNA that contains genes that code for the same characteristics. So for example, this chromosome inherited from, for example, your mother would contain a gene for eye color, a gene for hair length, or hair, <laughs> hair length, that's silly, um, hair, um, texture, let's say, and then um, whether or not you have freckles. And these are just completely random examples. They're not necessarily, they wouldn't necessarily be found on um, the same chromosome. And most of those traits are controlled by more than one allele, so they wouldn't actually code for the complete proteins that, that actually make the traits. But for the purposes of example, Let's just say that this chromosome contains those three alleles, and then this chromosome from your father would contain three alleles that also code for those same three characteristics. So what happens um, prior to meiosis is each of those homologous chromosomes is going to duplicate. So here we have the duplicated chromosomes known as sister chromatids, and they are still paired with their um, homologous chromosome. So during gamete formation, during meiosis one, those homologous chromosomes are going to separate, and then during, during a meiosis two, those sister chromatids are gonna separate. So you end up with four either sperm or egg cells, um, and you could potentially track the traits that um, wind up in those sperm or egg cells. So if I would have reviewed my PowerPoint before I just tried to explain that to you guys, this would have been a much nicer representation of what I just tried to tell you. Um, but this was um, a representation of homologous chromosomes. We have one from the mother and one from the father. Again, there's going to be certain alleles on these chromosomes that code for various traits. 
and the location of each of these of each of these alleles is known as a locus or plural loci. So we have three loci here. In this case, both the mother and the father have the same allele at this locus. They have the same allele at this locus, and they have different alleles at this locus. So the father contributed a dominant allele here, and the mother contributed a recessive allele here. So you know what the genotype is for these particular loci, but what will the phenotype be? So the phenotype is just the physical appearance of an organism, for example, color, um, height, etc. The genotype is the genetic makeup of an organism. So these are the actual alleles that are on those chromosomes. Um, with these simple traits that show the typical um, patterns of inheritance that Mendel was dealing with, the dominant allele determined the organism's appearance. So these would be expressed in the phenotype, and they end up masking recessive alleles, so the recessive alleles do not show through in, in phenotype, and they're written in genotype as a capital letter. So for example, we have dominant allele P, recessive allele P, dominant allele P, recessive allele P, um, and the only way that you can get a white flower is to have those two recessive P's. So we have what we end up with here is three quarters purple flowers and just one quarter white flowers. So recessive alleles have no noticeable effect on an organism's appearance if they are paired with a dominant allele. And they're expressed in the phenotype when no dominant allele is present. And they're written in the genotype as a lowercase letter. Um, just some more terminology here for you. Homozygous is when an organism has identical alleles for a gene. For example, big P, big P, or little p, little p would be a homozygous um, allele combination. And heterozygous refers to when an organism has different alleles for a gene. So for example, big P, little p. These two examples here are going to be heterozygous, and these two examples are going to be homozygous. So, knowing this information, we can now predict the outcomes of crosses between organisms. And a Punnett square allows us to do that. It's just a diagram that illustrates all the possible outcomes from different breeding scenarios. So again, this is assuming that these um, parent plants are monohybrid crosses, meaning they differ um, physically in just one trait. T denotes the tall um, allele, and little, little t denotes the short allele. So if you have both parents being dominant tall, then all of the offspring are going to be dominant tall. If you have both parents being mixed hybrids or heterozygous at this, lo at this um, locus, you're going to see that the offspring um, have a 3 to 1 ratio for this trait. So whenever there's a dominant allele, it's going to mask the recessive allele. And what you do here is just, you can just make these um, boxes drop the big T down here, and then carry the big T across here. So this would be big T, big T in this space. Um, this one, you would drop that little T down here, carry across the big T here, so that would be big T, little T in this space. That would still be a dominant um, phenotype, because there is still one um, big T in that genotype. With this slot here, you would drop the, the uh, dominant T down here and carry the little T across here. Again, it would be a big T, little T genotype. 
and in this case it would be little t 